Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity to just allow me, O oh God, to speak your word, to speak the truth, Lord God, in this hour. Father God, I thank you that today is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord, for um, helping me end 2018, the Jewish calendar, 5778. Um, by encouraging your people. Father, use me that the words that come out of my mouth be from you and not from my heart. Let it be from you, Lord. And I just pray, oh God, that you will give me eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying right now, God. Use me in a mighty way. I am your vessel. Lord, I pray, oh God, that every sin in my life, oh God, is forgiven now in the name of, I repent, Lord God, and I pray that you just help me, Lord God, to speak truth from you in Jesus name amen hey guys I just want to start in prayer because earlier I was recording and as I was speaking I was like no that's that's not God so anyway I I wanted to cover this recording with the blood of Jesus um, thank you father um, so I am actually um, you know September 9 2018 it's the last day before Rosh Hashanah which is at 6 sundown which is 6 p.m. tonight and um, I actually got back from church and I wanted to share something that's really been on my heart um, um, I actually went with a friend and who hasn't stepped in a church for over 30 years and she said she just wanted to go and it's crazy because the message was about Esther and um, how she this and it talked about how Esther was preparing for a year before she became queen and one thing that really stood out and you guys heard this before Mordecai said that how do you not know that you have been prepared for such a time as this when it came time for Esther to truly make a difference in the lives of many to stand up for truth she had a choice and her choice was either to back down and let her fears stop her from doing what she knows is right or to um, speak out and even though it co might cost her her life she went ahead and did it and so I believe that this is the hour that God has been telling me to speak on what I believe he is asking me to speak on and which is um, to call out and I probably will get a lot of negative comments from this but to call out those so-called believers whether if you're a pastor a teacher or just a Christian person who are being so judgmental toward those who don't know Christ and who are saying things that are not from God's heart the Father said that He sent Jesus Christ because He wants everyone to be saved. And you cannot expect people to be saved or to want what you have if you are judging them. And if you are speaking defeat and speaking curses, like that should not even come out of us. If we are truly filled with the Holy Spirit, Spirit, we would not be cursing people, but we're going to be speaking life into people. So this pastor was talking about um, what you sow is what you reap and basically said if you're experiencing hardships and pain and struggles in your life, that is because you were, you're a bad person, that you reap what you sow. So if you sow bad things, she'll reap bad things. If you sow good things, she'll reap good things. Guys, that is not the far that's the farthest from the truth. Okay? The Bible said that Jesus told his disciples, in this world, you will face trials, you will face persecution, you will face tribulation, you will face hardships. No one is exempt from hardships just because you know the Lord, just because you love Jesus. Okay, I'm sorry guys, but that is a false, um, it's, they're basically setting you up for failure, okay? The Bible says that he will give us strength to endure. 
How many times did the Bible says to not give up, to don't go weary, to keep believing and to keep holding on, but yet you chastise those who might slip or might do the wrong thing or might say the wrong thing or, you know, who knows, like whatever it is that it's not our place to be God in their lives. It's not our place to say, no, you're not going to get, the reason why you're experiencing hardship because you're a bad person. It just kind of reminds me of Job, how his friends told Job, it's because you did this and you did this and you did this. That is not how we're supposed to attract people to come and, and to the love of the Father. That's just not how you do it. Okay? And it broke my heart. Because here you have someone who hasn't been in church for 30 years. And she told me, she's like, that's the reason why I don't go to church. And, and I told her, I said, look, that is not God's heart. I said, God's heart is for the people. It doesn't matter if you're good, bad, or ugly. He loves everyone the same. And you're not exempt. I said, I'm a good person. You know, yes, I'm not perfect, but yes, I sow good seeds, but I experience a lot of hardship, trials, and tribulations. It's just part of life, but I'm an overcomer. I still have joy. I still have peace. I have the strength. I have wisdom. God has given me the power and the grace to endure. And I was just like shaking my head because I'm like, oh my gosh, this pastor doesn't even know you have someone here who haven't stepped into church for 30 years and you're here basically 10 and she has experienced a lot of hardships in her life. And you're basically telling this person that the reason why they're experiencing hardships in their life is because they were a bad person. Like, really? Oh my gosh, I was just hurting for her. Like what? I feel God. It's just like how in the world do you expect people to be saved if you're not encouraging and if you're not showing, giving hope to those who are hopeless? If you're not loving on them, they they need love. They need arms wide open, not like rejection, not like you know judgment, not like. Accusation. Oh my gosh, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser. We're not part of the kingdom of darkness. And this is what the churches are doing. The churches are continuously doing this type of stuff where they're not watching what they're saying. And what they don't know is you have people like my friend who who is trying to come back. But every time they come back, they feel judgment. That is not how we're going to see revival. That is not how we're going to see the harvest of souls. We have to love people. We have to welcome them. Good, bad, and ugly. It does, don't, don't stop. Just stop. And I, um, it breaks my heart. Like it really breaks my heart. And I told her, look, it's not God. That's not the heart of God. I said, that's people's opinions. And I even talked about how Jesus, he hung out with those that the church rejected, the tax collectors, the pros prostitutes, the liars. Those He loves people. He knows we're a fallen people. He knows we're not perfect. But that's why, like, you know, we inherit the kingdom through the blood of Jesus. He just wants our heart. He wants us to seek Him. He wants us to fellowship with Him. And He will make us brand new. It's a process. No one is perfect. And it just really hurt me today to see her in tears. Guys, if you're a believer, and I don't care if you're a pastor, an apostle, a bishop of a big church, you really need to guard your tongue. You really need to be careful on what you say. Because there are people like my friend who needs to hear about the love of Jesus and not the hate of the devil. And I am challenging you today to change your ways. I'm challenging you to change your ways. How do you expect people to come to know the love of the Father if all you're speaking is hate? Please, I'm begging you all. Represent the heart of the Father. Represent Him. Not your own agenda. Not so you could feel better about yourself. Okay, Not to grow your numbers. 
okay? Speak truth, speak hope, speak life, but do it with love, okay? Do it with love. Love people. Love, love, love. And I'm going to end with that. And I'm just going to spend time with the Lord because that really... This was a church. She invited me to this church because I was looking for a church. She invited me to this church. That was her. She said she has accepted for 30 years. And she said nothing has changed. It's the same. Guys, this, this, this can't happen anymore. This has to stop. It has to. And I, I pray... Heavenly Father, I pray that you will speak to my brothers and sisters right now, every single one of us, Lord God, that we will never, ever misrepresent you, Lord, in this season, that we will always represent love, joy, peace, the fruits of the Spirit. Help us, Lord God, to believe your word, but not only believe, but actually apply your word. Teach us, Lord, not to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious folks, but teach us, Lord, how to be a true disciple for you, loving those who are hungry for you, who are missing you, who don't even know you. And the reason why, oh God, they're experiencing this shallow and shallow, shallow um, space in the shallow, but that missing place in their heart that's why they're feel not complete and unwhole god is because they're missing you father god help us lord to point them towards you not the enemy we love you god and we just thank you lord for speaking to us right now and helping us become the sons and daughters you have called us to be in jesus name amen well god bless you guys and i'm sorry if i've been it just it really broke my heart i'll talk to y'all soon bye